Hello, everyone, and welcome to the MIT Migration Summit, an event organized by MIT React, Namal, Karam Foundation, Paper Airplanes, and the MIT JOL. We are organizing a month-long global convening where we are seeking to build bridges between a diverse community of learners, universities, companies, NGOs, social enterprises, and several other stakeholders to work towards uh, the key challenges and opportunities for refugee and migrant communities around the world. My name is Camila and I work as the coordinator for the MIT React Hub in Uruguay. When I was establishing the hub, I was very lucky to bump into Se Puede Cooperative, Construyendo Puentes Dignos, or Building Worthy Bridges, uh, which has inspired me with their work towards helping the Venezuelan population in Uruguay through the articulation of different projects. As guest speakers, uh, we have Rosana Garcia, who is the first generation university uh, student in her family and became a telecommunications engineer at the Catholic University of Uruguay. As a lifelong learner, she is finishing an executive MBA at the Quantic School of Business and Technology on May 2022. And she is a master in data science and automated learning candidate at the Republic University of Uruguay. Rosana has been working on several large and small projects in the government private and non-profit companies, and nowadays with Se Puede. Also, not, a, not as a speaker, but on the behind the scenes from the chat, we have Victoria Oliveira, coordinator for the IT projects developed by Se Puede, who has specialized in business management for IT. She'll be replying to some questions from the chat. And then we have two beneficiaries of Se Puede projects, Gustavo Coronel and Julieta Velázquez, who are both Venezuelans that have been living in Uruguay for the past years and will be telling us about their stories and their relationship to the project. So without further ado, welcome and thank you so much for being here. Uh, Camila, do you want, I, I am going to start to share screen. Hello everybody and uh, good morning. I don't know if everyone is in morning now <laughs> because I don't know where are you. I'm going to share screen. Uh, okay. So, uh, well, we are going to talk about um, breaking down barriers and creating opportunities. And I'm going to tell you that I am a little shy. So if you don't understand something because my voice is, is very uh, low, <laughs> you should tell me and then I'm, I'm going to to make it loud. Um, well, as Camila told you, we are going to talk about our project in Se Puede. Uh, this is our agenda for today. Uh, and Camila already has uh, present ourselves, uh, Victoria and, and me. Uh, Victoria is the leader of this project and she's the head and the, the core of the project. And uh, I, I've been in the in, in the organization, not in the in the in the field this time. Um, I, I came from the island from the country from 400 kilometers from Montevideo. So when I was 17 years old, almost 18, I had to move to Montevideo to continue my study. And this happened to all kind all, all people in these ages in the inland here in Uruguay have to, to do this, this uh, little ex, exile, exile to continue the development of their self. So it's, it's something that uh, we lost our family, we lost our friends, so we need to, to, to get support from another kind of, of systems. And we, can, we, we need, um, well, I, I'm going to tell you that, uh, uh, we need some kind of support that we we that in se puede we try to give to these these people who came from Venezuela in the in this this time. Um, well, as Camila says, I've been working on innovation technologies and trying to improve lives through my work. And Victoria has a, a public accountant degree and then a specialization in. IT management, 
So with this mix, uh, we try to, to expand the frontiers of the works of this kind of population. And uh, Se Puede is a cooperative society. Uh, uh, is uh, building by building. I don't know if the is the name uh, by professionals, all kind of professional uh, psychologists, social, and this uh, this cooperative has more than six years generate, uh, generating proposal for social inclusion and economic inclusions. Sorry, I need to uh, something here because I'm not seeing. Ah, uh, here, now, yes. Uh, so, Se Puede has been working from 2012 uh, and has been working with a lot of uh, people and, and a lot of kind of inclusion, not only with migrants. Uh, if the population that Se Puede work is vulnerable situation, but it could be women, or it could be migrants, or it could be another kind of vulnerability. So what, what we do is um, try to find, try to identify the needs of this population and then create an idea to, to work with them and then draft a, a proposal, uh, get involved with some, another, some other participants, uh, some other actors like a public or private uh, organizations in national or international and then we execute uh, the, the project and at the end wh what we do is, is try to systematize this with uh, some measure some indicators and and that's well now it's the, the migrant project so that's what that that's process. This process we apply to every every problem, and with the migrant projects, we did the same. We started to uh, look uh, look in our databases about Venezuelans people who came to Uruguay and has been involved in some kind of project with Se Puede, and then try to get more information from other actors to identify what was uh, what what was happening with them here uh, so the, the name of the project is conectadas uruguayos y venezolanos and was growing in the middle of the pandemic so it is growing because it is uh, we started on december and uh, the first generation is still uh, doing uh, trainings or, or are uh, in some part of the project and they are coming more people to 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 get involved in the in the in the, in the project. Uh, so in mind what we we, we have was about uh, allows Venezuela to integrate socially and economically into our society uh, and it has two, two uh, components, big components. One is the life project space that this was what I was telling you about our psychology, psychosocial support to improve our personal development because um, we need some other kind of support, not only train it, go to a courses or to a workshop and have everything in a book and then a, a, labo a laboratory or something like that you need more than that when you when you lose your family and your friends and uh, because you you came back to your house and maybe in your reality is not a, uh, it's not a good to the, to your personal development so the other part of the project is uh, training and then you we have to uh, branch this word is very difficult to pronounce in, in English. Uh, entrepreneurship, <laughs> entrepreneurship is, is one, and the other is more about training in IT areas and testing and uh, social networks and others. So the entrepreneurship is uh, is not only in IT. It could be in IT, but it's not the the, the main factor there. We 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 work in another kind of. Uh, 
industrial. Uh, and the IT is, it is more about uh, making some alliance with uh, companies. Um, so here, the, the psychosocial con uh, containment support is a, is a space where you, you the, the participants and in, in groups and sometimes families too has uh, a, a space to well to share with others and you know, I, I don't know how to spell uh, maybe Victoria later can can talk a, a little more about this or or the two participants Venezuelan participants about what they do there but this it is more about a uh, um, oh what what I've been telling you, telling you that it is more as a support group, and this is a thing that that is uh, shared in the two branch here. I mean, this is transversal, and you are going to be here uh, the the whole uh, project, even if you get this or if you get the IT. So. In the lab, the labor insertion and IT education, we try to improve digital skills, and we have testing and programming courses and databases and API tests. And then, with alliance with uh, IT company, we have these uh, internships. Some of them uh, could be paid, and trying to have show placement. Two, as um, ah, one thing I, I forgot to tell is that Victoria is uh, in the round table of this digital civilization in Uruguay. So they are, uh, there are a lot of fine kind of factors and we uh, build some alliance with this, these actors because there we have the, the opportunity to talk about the future of wars and talk about the, the future of health and the, the relationship between people and a new kind of works. So with this other um, builds that we construct, uh, with, sorry, uh, this other um, puentes, bridge that we, we build, we, we could do this uh, internships and try to put the, the resumes of the people there in, in IT companies and, and bring this opportunity to this population. Uh, and the entrepreneurships uh, project, part of the project, it is more like uh, teaching some skills to create your corporate identity, your business plan, administration, cost, finance, designs, uh, and to help you to create um, your own business. So these are the two branch. And well, I already talked a little about this, about the, the, the process. It's, it's always the, the same. We need a, a diagnosis. Uh, at the beginning, and then you're going to go to the live project, or the in, or no, and testing or entrepreneurship. You are going to to pass through six hours per week and five months total. And then here there are the the new actors, the, the companies or public or private organization. Then you are going to pass through the shop insertion. And for se puede, um, to continue this kind of project, what we do is some kind of systematiz systematization of the experience and try to improve what uh, we are doing or try to uh, change something because as it is, uh, it is, a, a, it is say, it's always the same process, but it's not always the same population. It, it's not always the same uh, industry so you, you you're going to have new inputs and you need to uh, custom this this process uh, well the data that we we have three 
343 registrants to to make to get involved in this in this project, and we discriminate by ages because there are some and we define that critical ages are uh, under 29 years old and above 45 where you are um, older or younger to get involved into jobs um, so in this in this situation we have that a woman has a a little, well, it's like 50 and 50, it's a little less, but 50 and 50. And in, in men, the this, this, this situation is uh, a little uh, worse, but the difference between the, the woman who has been involved in the project and men are, are, are huge. So we, we don't know if this could be a good representation, but maybe we, we need to, change, to think about that is 50 and 50 in both. Uh, who are above or under the critical ages. And uh, another measures, another measures of uh, inclusion that we have is that 60%, more than 60% of, of people who came to us uh, identify themselves with uh, Afro-descendants. And for more than 4% indigenous. That it, this is very uh, new for Uruguay because we uh, even we know that we have uh, accent uh, from indigenous here in Uruguay. The, this population is, is is invisible; they don't exist. So uh, this uh, five point twenty five percent. Uh, says that they have uh, some kind of disability and um, there's a 4.6 uh, the community of LGBT and here this is one of the data that we have that it's very important to, the, to make a, a diagnosis about uh, what is going on with this population and it, it is different from what what happened to us with the Uruguayan population that we used to work. Because here, what we have is that people are mostly very well trained. They have a, a, a terse university studies or technician. Or, I mean, they have been uh, studying a lot. But they are not under, uh, I don't know how to say that in English. Uh, <laughs> Well, it doesn't matter. What, what, what I wanted to tell is that they, they don't have a problem with the uh, with education. They are more uh, about the integration of this education into the, the show placement here in Uruguay. Some of this could be because uh, here they don't, uh, how do you say that? It's like a, a, when you... Oh, so you try God. to re revalidate. Yeah, the revalidate degree. that. The yes. university degree, yeah. Yes, I think that this is a, a part of the of the problem that is very big, that to, uh, until today, the education and the, this part of the integration is not uh, working. But it, uh, so the problem was uh, another. It's not the, the education, the, the problem. It's, what we found is that, for example, to IT, even that I am not a very good uh, English speaker, <laughs> but you need to uh, know English to learn something in IT. Everything is in English. You know, when you go out and try to find things and you're always um, uh, studying English, writing in English and your books in high school were in Spanish, but when you move to university, everything is in English. So this is the, 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 the problem into the IT world, not, not to the entrepreneurship, because there you are going to be in the common industry here in Uruguay. But the IT industry, they are all in English. So here we have the, the first problem that uh, more than the six, uh, more than the, the half part of the people were uh, no language skills in English. So here, this uh, the, the, the first big barrier. 
to cross. Then the other diagnosis we have is, well, I was, is the, uh, derivated from the last, the, from the other uh, slide, is that they have the, the, um, uh, the financial situation is, uh, they have incomes from works that are, that's, are not, uh, that not meets the expectation of, 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 of what they are prepared for. Uh, and some of them are unemployment or are in some kind of insurance or have some kind of informal employment. But almost half of them uh, are working in works, in shops that are, uh, they are sub-evaluated, some, something like that. Uh, so for now, we have trained 140 people. The goal for this year is uh, 350. I hope we can do it. <laughs> and uh, but it's today is April, so I think that we could be. We are almost in the in the middle. <laughs> and um, well, here you are going to see some pictures of these groups. And well, we have some partnership with, uh, we try to have more, but, and we are working on that to the English classes. And uh, nowadays we are working with Anglo Institute and uh, the, from the support of the British Embassy. And some institution has uh, have the, making some donations to, to improve our uh, classrooms. And in the IT program, we have been working with Globan, that is a, a company, a software company in Uruguay, but has a presence in the whole America. And what they are doing is um, training, and then they can um, offer job placement or internships. And here, is, this is uh, from the Minister of Development. It's a, it's a fair where the participant could show their entrepreneurship there and have some uh, networking with others. And the Meet React program uh, joined to, to us with the Project Life. So they, the people, people who are in Meet React program could access to the support of psychosocial uh, that we have, and this is a very good uh, experience for us too. Then here, this is another project about textile. Uh, there were um, women who have children under four years old to, to get into textile training. Uh, so this is to the Minister of Social Development too. And, um, Well, I think I, I've been talking about this a lot, <laughs> about the characteristics and the, uh, yes. So uh, maybe we can hear their voices. We have Gustavo Coronel and Julieta Velázquez. Both of them can speak in English. So they are one of the 6.3% who can do this. And uh, maybe if you want to, to, to talk with them, you, you're going to have a, a, a better uh, knowledge about our project. Gustavo or Julieta? Yes. Hi, everybody. How are you? So I'm Hi. gonna leave out a little bit of my, my experience, if you don't mind. Uh, with the puede. So uh, I'm a single mom. I came from Venezuela two and a half years ago. Um, well, it was like a very fast process for me. Um, I'm really glad that I chose Uruguay because I love the people here. I love, there are a lot of good things for me and for my kid. But coming here, it, you know, it's, it has been very difficult for me, uh, like, Romy said, I didn't have my degree revaluated. And 
So I wasn't able, and I haven't been able to find the job that I like. Uh, and I thank that because last year I had this opportunity to participate and um, I studied testing with them. So it like kind of opened this new world of opportunities you can see. I mean, I studied modern language back in Venezuela. So all that I did was I stayed translating and as an interpreter. And I never thought about um, the studying or or doing something in the IT area. I found it, uh, I always found it like amazing. It was really interesting, but I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have the chance to go and study something. They gave me the chance. I'm really happy for it. Um, and now I really want to uh, have my professional life in the IT area. That's, that's what I want. Um, I know that the world is, you know, this, this IT world is growing every day. Uh, it's making new opportunities every day. Uh, and, and we know it's, it's kind of a good uh, paid jobs are in the IT area. So um, now I'm looking, I'm searching for job opportunities. I haven't had a lot of uh, interviews because I'm not currently, I'm working for a company that Dealing the University of Texas Hospital, so they they told me that they might have an opportunity for me really soon. So um, I'm staying. I'm hopeful that I will get it. <laughs> and um, but I found the only thing that I found uh, like really challenging for someone like me that is starting in this world is you don't get to have like not a lot of opportunity as a beginner. Of, um, you know some some area it's really difficult like i sent my cvs all around and, and all of that and i well every every job uh, opportunity that you see uh, is requiring more than, than what you know so that's something challenging for me but i know it's something that we can overcome <laughs> studying more and uh, working hard for it so that was my experience with, with them with testing. And also we did that um, project of life. It was, it was also life changing for me um, because all this migrating um, experience, it's really, it's really hard. I need to tell you, it's really, really hard. I mean, I never wanted to go out of Venezuela. I, I thought I was gonna live there all, all my life with my kid and I would be happy. And no, things change uh, so fast. And you know, when you have to work and you have to get the money to have your kid uh, studying and all that, you don't get to like sit down and think what has happened to you, what everything that has happened. So it was really nice to be there, to have somebody, so people that support you people that uh, share with you their personal experience as well. And you, you feel that you're not alone, <laughs> that it's not only you that is going through all of this. So um, that was beautiful. That was a beautiful experience. And I know it was it was great for people that are entrepreneurs and now they have like a, a whole um, um, connection with all this, all the people that have business and all of that. It, it was great. I love that experience and I appreciate it a lot. I will, I mean, I will have it in my heart forever. It makes me emotional because I, I, I start um, I, <laughs> thinking about the things that we did. It. It's, it's really nice. So that's it. <laughs> I don't know if you have any questions. I'm open. <laughs> Thank you, Julieta. Thank you so much. And we, before asking some questions, I would love to hear from Gustavo as well. Yes. Okay. Uh, well, good day to all. Uh, in this case, uh, I have uh, experienced some like Julieta. It wasn't easy to leave your country, to leave everything you know behind, but it's not the end. 
that it could be the most difficult part of it, just to know that it's not the end. It's just the beginning of something new. And don't give up. In Se Puede, one of the main things that helps you is that, is to find another people that have the same issue that you are, that you are not alone. That's something very important that understand that you are not alone and you can, you can get help, not just, uh, not just on these skills and everything to get a good job, but also on this way, because that is the most important thing. Because if you block yourself or your mind and you don't see ahead, then you you are going not you are not going to to get or to advance that could be the most difficult things in my case for example i was a deck officer unique job for example uh, uh, in my case for this career i don't have the opportunity to validate again because I have, for example, I have to be a national citizen just to get the validate because in here in Uruguay, the career is uh, made in the army. So to be in the army, I need to be a citizen and I don't have the time yet for that. But that doesn't mean that my skills are wasted but it's hard to find a, a new area that you can use your skill. You can be the best at, or have a great uh, set of skills, but you need to find, to find the place or to find the area where your skills can be used and, and well, be wanted. I am here in Uruguay. Right now I have uh, three and a half years right now. Uh, I have a great experience with this uh, process of Se Puede. Uh, they help me to see beyond the next five years. I'm going to be, to say the truth. I was in a point uh, on a moment that I didn't see ahead that a couple of months. Right now, my mind changed. I, now I see myself, I have a goal from the next five years. That is important to have uh, some goal. It doesn't matter the kind of goal, but as long as you have a goal, you can work toward it. You are going to make the effort for it. Uh, right now, I am the testing part. I enjoy, enjoy really well this. Uh, that's something I always like, technology, but this gave me the chance to get into it. I was more like uh, most of the people, like just a user, but I enjoy technology. This gave me the opportunity and opened me my mind on this area that you don't have to make a five years career to get into it. There are other ways to get into it. This is some example of it, that you can get into technology, into technology area. And from there you can grow up because it's an, like Julieta says, it's just a new world. It's a, it's a new door that after it's open, you see different paths because you can keep on testing or you can become a developer or you can become a scrum master. There are many, 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 not jobs, but many areas that you can go and you can improve yourself and become more than you were before. And well, uh, in this case, I should say that my experience with the interview has been a good one. In fact, I have been many interviews, but the main issue in this case in Uruguay is that a theory looking for junior, but with experience or entry level with experience. And that's, it could be uh, the crash of this because this is a if you are requiring someone for an entry 
entry, entry level, you should not ask for too many experience. So they had, they wanted, for example, I had this interview, I get, it was very well. Uh, the recruitment company tell me that you are almost perfect. Almost perfect because you need almost three months on a real project. For example, this was, a, this was real. Uh, she told me that you need because this is what the, the project leader wants. It's not something we, you, you comply with all the requirements except this. This is something that we understand that this is part of the culture and we need to change this a lot to have more opportunity, not just for me, but for everyone that is coming after me because we need to understand that. And this not only happen on the testing part, it happens on different parts on the IT area and also on other areas or different industry. We need to think that if we want to have senior, we need to have junior. And yes, we need to have the, to give the opportunity to these people that is on an entry level and they have the skills, they have the, they want to make the effort, they want to do the job and we have to give them the opportunity. Completely, thank you. Thank you so much, Gustavo. And I, I completely agree. And first, let me tell you that Gustavo and Julieta, you're both going to accomplish it. And I, 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 want, I want to be uh, updated about any, any job placements that you have, because I, I, know, I know that you will. And I know that uh, Vicky and Rosana uh, with Cooperativa uh, Se Puede are always uh, with you side by side. And, and, you know, and I think you, you mentioned some really good points and we always talk about uh, the flexibility that companies should have when when recruiting and but you know going to a previous point and that I think it's it's super important is the psychosocial support that uh, companies and projects like this can give and actually when when Rosana was describing the whole project and for me, it was quite funny, and maybe for for people who are listening to to the session that that no react, uh, you can see the resemblance with uh, with the projects that we not only want to give people the the opportunity to to have educational pathways, but also workforce development, digital skills, and other core competencies that are highly needed, and and I think that. Uh, Sepeda work is, is really good, especially talking about uh, Proyecto Vida, because they understand that you cannot, you know, just like give numbers and give all these opportunities because without understanding what is really happening in the mind of those who were forcibly, forcibly displaced because of different uh, because of different aspects. And you know, one comment that we have here on the chat that is from Davianis, that she's uh, an MIT React student from the cohort in Uruguay. And she, she also mentioned that she has been participating in the life project space. And it had been great because she also had the opportunity to share experiences with other Venezuelans and support each other. You know, And I think it's important to have these spaces of community uh, of, of, of those nationalities here in Uruguay. So. I don't know if Vicky or Rosana want to want to say something else about uh, Proyecto Vida. Here I have Vicky send me things in Spanish and I'll, I'll translate for her. <laughs> so she's saying that Proyecto Vida uh, is a space where they try to integrate and they want to elaborate life projects with uh, with the, the migrants that are participating on those projects so that they can enhance their lives socially, economically, you know, and and they, so basically what they do is different dynamics. Uh, so they have, uh, I think they have like different pathways. So for example, they start just recognizing, for example, what are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? You know, how can I get prepared for those kind of questions that we always know that we get those ones asked in, 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 our, in our interviews and, you know, and, they're always accompanied with, with one uh, psychologist because they want to give also the strength for those who maybe 
were not able to, to talk like this, you know, what are my strengths and weaknesses to being able to do that. And, you know, what, what they also do um, is uh, then uh, they uh, work with some other abilities, emotional abilities. And for example, they work with anxiety and, you know, and self-esteem and self-love and communications. And, and I think this is, this is a really, really important point. And, and I, I really admire the project and, you know, I, I don't know also, Davianis, if you're there and you also want to tell more about your experience, you're more than, more than welcome as well. Yes, Camila, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Hey, hi everyone. Um, I am Davianis, uh, uh, MIT student with us. And uh, I've been participating in the live project. Um, and it was a great experience. I'm still on it every Wednesday. Um, we share a lot of experiences. And uh, as Camila said, uh, we are building our um, personal skills. Uh, they help you see what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, um, what do you have now, your support group, let's say your family, friends, and uh, see what, are, what your resources are um, to accomplish what you're trying to do. And uh, they help you build uh, uh, smart objectives, goals um, to reach them in a year, for example. And uh, as I said, it is a great experience uh, because you have the opportunity to share with others that have the same culture. Um, and uh, you listen to very personal uh, uh, stories and uh, you build your uh, network, your support network group, let's say. And uh, we help each other, all of us. Uh, because uh, you can meet someone that uh, knows English, so I can help others uh, with that, or you have someone that is better with uh, IT skills. Um, so it's a great support group, and uh, I'm really grateful to be a part of it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for sharing, Navianis. And thank you also, Se Puede, for giving the opportunity for MIT React learners to also participate. And, you know, some other comments I wanted I wanted to say, and, you know, the stats that and the data that Rosanna shared, I think, is, is just shocking in the sense that, you know, we have a lot of, of we're great, you know, like, we should be seeing this as a, as a very good strength, the thing that we are having migrants and people coming from different places that are actually overqualified, but unfortunately they are underpaid. And, you know, so there should really be some, some new kind of mechanisms that they can actually show their credentials and be validated uh, for, for what they know and what they can do. Um, and also, you know, the, the English, the English barrier that we that we see um, when I was establishing the hub here in Uruguay, I, I received a lot of questions, but why, why is this in, in English if we're talking Spanish here, you know, and, and the thing is that English is the most universal, universal language on the world, and if we actually want to give the opportunities for them to enhance their lives, we have to to give the opportunities for them to also uh, talk in English. Um, so here we are receiving uh, some other questions from the chat. And uh, we have Maria Blanco. Hello, everyone. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Maria is the executive director from Alianza Cultural Uruguay, Estados Unidos. And Luciano uh, is also is also here. Um, Thank you so much uh, for being here and, and please unmute, unmute yourselves if you want uh, to make any comments. Uh, MIT React learners are also uh, studying uh, with Alianza uh, with some uh, courses uh, developing their, their English skills. So thank you so much for, for being here. Hi, just saying hello. We, uh, we really appreciate uh, the, inv the invitation and we love hearing about what uh, Gustavo and Julieta have been their experiences and, and, and getting a chance to hear firsthand how um, 
the challenges, let's say, of, of moving to a different country and of making your own place in your own space. And yes, of course, Luciana and I are biased. We believe that, that English is essential and we are happy to be working with MIT React on this. And we are happy to be uh, also in touch with Sepuede. And, and we are open to exploring all ideas and all possibilities to make sure that we can support both of your organizations in, in making English available to your constituents, to your members. Excellent, thank you, thank you so much. And well, uh, I, I have the one last question, but also feel free to just post your questions on the chat. Here we have another comment from Eunice uh, from the Inter-American Foundation in Uruguay and Paraguay. Uh, and they are congratulating the Puede team uh, carrying out all the efforts. And they have a lot of satisfa satisfaction uh, seeing the progress that the Valencian population and community are, are doing in Uruguay. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for participating. And one question that I have, you know, like, so you had uh, 140 participants uh, last year, and now you're trying to accomplish 350. You know, we're also doing that kind of steps with, with React, and it's very good to just like see how the programs are growing year by year. So basically, one question that I had was also, what are, what are the plans for the future? And if, for example, if you were also planning to work with, with other migrant populations, um, not just the Venezuelan one. So that was just one curiosity. And I, I have here, Vicky is replying in Spanish. Uh, uh, she's saying that they have been working here, generating bridges uh, with vulnerable uh, communities in Uruguay, but the barriers are, are really big. So basically what they want to continue doing is developing the, the digital skills that they need for and, and digital competencies, you know, the basic ones for them to have a job in education opportunities and for them to create a, a to give a new step in, in their lives. Um, she's saying that uh, maybe apparently the 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 path it could be easy, but it actually is not. And you know, so what they want to continue doing is to strengthen those collaboration with different organizations. So you can also see their their Gmail there for them to to reach out to se puede and, and possibly collaborate in, in different projects as well. So I don't know if Rosana, Gustavo, Julieta, Vicky, you want to make any any other comments. I want to say something. Uh, first, I'm sorry because I don't speak. Uh, really, I don't speak very well. So I don't prefer, uh, prefer to this occasion, but it's a um, very, very important occasion for to show our, our work. And only I, I want to say it's very important to create bridges to opportunity for different people. And I want to uh, say thank you, everybody, to special my company, Rosana, for you, uh, you explain uh, our job and comparing our passion. Uh, uh, Eunice from uh, Inter-American Foundation, who supports us and Cecilia and Diana for Global. Um, she, she works with another uh, Venezuelans. So thank you everybody and um, yeah, thank you. I'm very happy for this opportunity and to be continued. Thank you. Julieta, thank yes. you, Vicky. Thank you for all you do. <laughs> thank you, Vicky. You're great. <laughs> to make us and part. I, I was I was really grateful and so happy for you to have been able to to welcome you to the summit. And you know this I was mentioning them earlier that this is one of the few sessions that um, has been held by 
programs and people from South America. And I believe it is highly important to also be able to tell the, the stories and conditions that we are also living here, you know, with political, social, economic crises that cannot even be put in words. So, and but they are also highly contributing, raising number of displaced people around the world. So just, you know, some last words, let's continue building uh, bridges and creating this kind of initiatives and, and programs uh, to help refugee and migrants communities around the world. So thank you so much. Have a happy Friday. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Much. Bye -bye. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Happy weekend.